Hello everybody, this is CJ Wiley with more Adventures on the Road. Today I'm going to talk to you about the old days when gambling was plentiful around the country and uh, pretty much any town you went into you could find their local champion that would play for money. And a lot of it was because of the color of money coming out uh, in 1986 <clears throat> and for the next few years it uh, drew a lot of upscale clientele to the pool rooms and places like Julian's and Dave and & Buster's and Fox and & Hound were all upscale billiard rooms that had really good food and catered to a uh, affluent audience. But <clears throat> the, what I was concerned with was the uh, gambling. And that was really good too because a lot of these younger guys thought they were Tom Cruise spinning their sticks and wanted to play for money and uh, puffing their chest out. So they were like easy marks for players uh, that were actually road players <clears throat> that made their living doing that like I did. So one of the big differences that, that a lot of people don't realize is nine ball was the main game that was gambled on, but we did not play the rules that are being played today. We played a game called Two shot shootout or rollout, or sometimes they called it push out. And in that game, you had to make two fouls for the other player to get ball in hand. Now, there was two ways to play this game as well. There was uh, what was called any two fouls, which meant if I rolled out and you made a foul by shooting the shot and scratching or, <clears throat> or not hitting a rail. I would get ball in hand, or you'd play two fouls uh, by the same person. That meant if I rolled out and you took the shot and you fouled, it wasn't ball in hand because it wasn't two consecutive fouls, so there'd have to be another foul made. So anyway, the game was uh, a lot more strategic, a lot more entertaining, exciting, because it had the components of the two-way shot that was prevalent, and a two-way shot is a shot that has both a e defensive and offensive component involved at the same time. <clears throat> so, for instance, you would uh, play shape on your next ball, but you'd do it in such a way that if you didn't make the shot, your opponent wouldn't have an easy shot and uh, would be forced to uh, either roll out or play safe. So, uh, and, and, you know, it was actually when you were more sophisticated, it was a three-way shot because you would try to make the ball. You'd play safe by getting another ball in the way of the pocket you were shooting at so that if you hung it or got it close to the pocket, you'd have that ball for a backup so your opponent didn't have an easy shot. Uh, man, sun is strong here in Florida. <laughs> but anyway... <clears throat> Um, so it was a three-way shot. So you shoot the shot, play safe, and play shape on the next ball at the same time. That took a lot of skill, and that's where most of the knowledge uh, was in nine ball, was rolling out to those shots, and uh, if your opponent didn't have the seasoning that you had, it uh, would create a situation where he might shoot a shot that was a low percentage shot or you would roll out shots where he could make the shot but would have a hard time getting position on the next ball. So it took a lot of uh, understanding and knowledge of the percentages of the game. And uh, that's not the way it is playing the rules these days. One foul, because if somebody has a hard shot, they're probably just going to play safe <clears throat> and force the player to kick which kicking was really never supposed to be part of nine ball. I mean, occasionally you'd kick at a ball if it was hanging in the pocket or if it was easy. But for the most part, you would never kick a ball that's in the center of the table. You would just roll out, and then the other player had the option always of making you shoot the shot or taking it themselves. So uh, that's why they called it rollout, because you could roll out at any time or push out. So um, that game is the majority of what was being played when the gambling was going on because the older time players would always say if anybody wanted to play the one foul game they'd just say i'm not kicking at my money are you crazy 
because, you know, they knew that kicking was not a part of the game, even though when it did become part of the game, there were players that excelled at that, like uh, Mike Sigel, uh, Captain Hook. He played that game really well and would keep you locked up, and he kicked pretty well, too. And then came along <clears throat> Efren Reyes, who had uh, a strong billiard knowledge. So his kicking ability was really good. And uh, he, he made like an art form out of it. But again, it really wasn't supposed to be part of the game anyway. Let me see. Let me get over here. <laughs> get on this highway. So, um, so yeah, they, they did, uh, you know, any rule that you change in, in pool, the champion players are going to figure out a way to perfect it. So kicking's one of those things, and then when they started racking their own balls and, uh, you know, they figured out ways to, to make balls easier on the break, especially the corner ball playing nine ball or uh, the two balls behind the one playing ten ball. And there's an art form to that, even though, you know, again, I don't really think that should be part of the game, especially to the extent it is now. But... Uh, Back to that rollout, there were several players in the country that were super good at that game. And one of the reasons that they changed uh, to one foul was players like Mike Siegel and Buddy Hall and Earl Strickland were dominating the game of rollout because they had so much knowledge. And then Earl brought to the table the jump shot or he would roll out and then jump over the ball and make it. And uh, if somebody couldn't jump, he had an incredible advantage at that game. That's why, you know, if, if we were going to bring the game back, you couldn't use jump cues because that takes the two-way shot out of the game. Because if I play, a say, a bank shot and I play it, you know, to have a safety ball in case I miss, well, if I leave it too close to the pocket especially, they can just take out their jump cue, jump over that ball and make it and... Uh, so it eliminates the two-way shot. So uh, that jump cue, it's, it's done a few good things, but for the most part, it's made the game easier, and it's taken away the two-way shot. And that is, like I said, the most uh, knowledgeable type situation that, that you can get into is when you're rolling out with a really good player and you've got to roll out shots that, uh, you know, if he makes you shoot it, that you have a plan. And if he shoots it himself, you got to make sure that it's a really tough shot and a tough shot to play shape on because he can do that to you. He can play the two-way shot. So you, you, you've really got to understand the game at a high level. Your shot making has to be really fine-tuned, especially your banking and cutting balls, especially long shots off the end rail. You know, the type of shots that are... Uh, interesting and uh, entertaining to watch because uh, you know that is one of the one of the greatest things you can see is is a really hard shot off the end rail or a, or a real tough bank shot or cut shot you know and uh, and quite honestly playing one foul you're just not going to see many of those type shots so um, the players that that really were hurt when they changed the rules were, were players like Keith McCready, who was in the color of money. That was his specialty is playing, uh, playing rollout because he had that knowledge and he was an incredible shot maker and, uh, and also fearless because if you're playing somebody that game and you're, uh, you're scared to shoot hard shots, hey, you're in a world of trouble because <laughs> You know, somebody like, like the way that I play, uh, you're really not going to have much of a chance because I'm going to keep rolling out those hard shots, and if, if you don't make them, uh, I will. And if I don't make it, I'm probably not going to leave you a shot. So I'm uh, real confident in, in uh, being able to outmove players that aren't at the level of Buddy Hall and Mike Siegel and Earl Strickland and Keith McCready and... Uh, Reed Pierce was another one that I played uh, some big gambling matches with, and we always played push out. And uh, he was a tough competitor, but we would play for 
sometimes two straight days, and uh, it was a really high-level pool. I enjoyed those sessions because when you're playing that the two foul uh, roll out or push out you really get more into the game and you start getting uh, you know kind of into your opponent's head because you got to know his strengths and weaknesses and uh, you know if he if he doesn't bank well you got to exploit that if he doesn't shoot off the end rail well you have to exploit that so you really have to pay attention to what your opponent's strengths and weaknesses are and that's how I developed uh, some of my uh, skills in teaching, is I can evaluate a player in a pretty short amount of time and tell if they have weaknesses. And the way that I do that usually is I, I really watch their feet position and how it affects their upper body position, and then I watch what they're doing on the table. And if they're doing all three of those things well, then I know they're a tough opponent. But for the most part, unless they're a champion, they will have little weaknesses. And, uh, you know, if they don't position their body correctly, a lot of times they'll cut balls better to the right than to the left. So when I'm rolling out, I'm conscious of that. So, you know, I'm going to exploit their weaknesses, especially under pressure. Maybe not at first, but when it starts getting closer and closer to the finish line, uh, I'm definitely going to start exploiting their weaknesses and trying to... Uh, push out to a position where where I can uh, I can win that battle because that's what it is it's a battle for the first shot between the two players so anyway so so the rules of the game like I said you can you can push out at any time your uh, opponent always has the option to shoot or make you shoot you can either play two consecutive fouls or two fouls by the same person if you uh, make the ball before the nine ball or before the money ball, if there's a handicap involved, then that ball always spots and you get a spot shot behind the line. And the line is two diamonds up. There's, that's, that's, that's the uh, foot string. So there, there used to be a line across there sometimes where you could actually see it. But, uh, but you got to stay, the slang was stay in the kitchen. You can't go past two diamonds up and then you shoot the spot shot. So I've shot thousands of these spot shots, and, uh, you know, I had to get really good at them because they come up a lot playing the push-out game. And I had to be able to not only make a spot shot but get the cue ball anywhere on the table because, uh, you know, the situations were always different. And uh, a lot of times we'd put the ball close to the rail, shoot the spot shot with low English, and draw it to the side rail to play position on a ball that would be closer to the, to the end rail. So there's a lot of skill to that. And the spot shot was kind of like a, uh, kind of like a free throw in basketball or a, uh, like an extra point or, or uh, field goal in football, I guess, would be uh, comparable to the uh, spot shot. But a really good player is going to make that spot shot just about every time and uh, of course under pressure anybody can miss one too <clears throat> and I've seen that happen so anyway uh, I'm trying to think of any more rules that uh, that apply but that's the main uh, breakdown of, of how you play the two shot shootout push out roll out whatever you want to call it and uh, you know if you love pool and you have a practice partner that that wants to uh, experiment and play a game that, that, that you'll definitely got, get a lot of uh, satisfaction out of, and you'll also uh, increase your ability to do the two-way shots that, that do come up in, in all the other games, too. I mean, basically, one pocket is a game where, where the two-way shots come up all the time. You're always trying to either make a ball in your pocket and play safe or move a ball to your side of the table and play safe, but there's, there's usually two things going on at the same time, and that's why one pocket has become such a great gambling game and spectator game. The only problem with one pocket is there's a lot of like shots that really don't have any excitement or entertainment value. So if you get a lot of those in a row, um, you know, it, you're going to lose your audience. That's why you'll never see one pocket on TV. Uh, they do it on streaming video, but the people that are going to watch one pocket are, are already 
pool aficionados, so they, they really know the game and enjoy watching, uh, even if they're playing safe a lot, because of the strategic value. So the strategy, the excitement, the entertainment, the two-way shots are all the best components of pool. So what I've done is I put together a game that forces that situation out every game. And uh, I made a video about it a few years ago, and I've been working on getting it out and releasing it, but just haven't found the right time and uh, situation to do it yet. But it's getting closer and closer. So uh, if anybody out there wants to get involved with that, let me know, because I'm probably going to release that type game here in the next couple months and uh, try to do it as big as I can and, and uh, my goal is just to get pool in the public spotlight again so everybody can enjoy it because back when I was playing on ESPN we were averaging a million dollars per show and that's a lot of people coming into the game that might normally not even think about playing pool so um, anyway if you like this uh, and you want to see more, join me at www.cjwiley.com or I've got my instructional videos or I've got a YouTube channel. Please uh, like, share, and uh, subscribe to that channel or you may be watching it on YouTube now. So <laughs> if you are, appreciate you. Leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Till then, this is CJ. Talk with you all soon.